my name is uh, Brendan Raisen. I'm a third year uh, urology resident at the University of Montreal. Uh, I mainly work at the uh, Montreal Super Hospital, uh, the French one, um, but I also work at other tertiary care uh, centers. And uh, I have interests for BPH, uh, for stones, and also for oncology. Uh, so essentially, um, we there's a lot of interests that we've had that uh, regarding minimally invasive treatments for uh, BPH. Um, and essentially, a prostatic artery embolization is um, a newer technique um, that has limited data on its effect on a lower, lower, lower urinary tract symptoms. Um, going through the, the literature, we found that there were uh, a few, few real-world studies that were assessing surgical outcomes of PAE. So essentially, what we wanted to compare PAE to the reference method, uh, which is TERP, and to a minimally invasive sur sur surgical technique, so kind of like PAE, uh, we wanted to use uh, prostatic urethral lift, uh, which is frequently used in clinical practice and is guideline recommended um, at the AU for the AUA and the CUA. Um, and essentially, in our study, uh, we found that PAE exhibited the highest 30-day and 90-day readmission rates compared to all surgical techniques. We found that the most frequent complication after PE was nonspecific abdominal pain, and that uh, PE had the highest retreatment rates after two years compared to all surgical techniques, which went up to about 28%. Um, essentially, further studies should investigate what, which patient, what type of patient would benefit the most from PE. Right. Um, that's a good question. Essentially, it's important to keep in mind that, that in this study, we are comparing gland ablative and non-gland ablative procedures. So obviously, if you look through the literature, um, it does, excuse me, it, it, it does show that gland ablative procedures such as TERP and nucleation or aquablation will always offer lower retreatment rates compared to minimally, minimally invasive surgical techniques. Um, currently, in clinical practice, other minimally invasive surgical techniques, such as Resume or the prostatic urethral lift that we were looking at, they do offer better dur durability and efficacy compared to uh, PAE. Um, as I mentioned, further studies would need to investigate what kind of patient would benefit the most from PAE, uh, more specifically for PUL, uh, so prostatic urethral lift. Um, a good thing about this technique is it doesn't cause the bothersome adverse events associated with CHIRP, such as the retrograde ejaculation or the bladder neck contraction, which could be worrisome for, for the younger patient. Also, if PUL fails, well, the patient is still eligible for a gland ablative procedure. So the ideal patient for PUL would probably be a younger patient uh, in their mid-50s who doesn't want to potentially experience the, the bothersome adverse events associated with TERP, just like I said, so like retrograde ejaculation. Um, I, I, we, we, we think that the ideal patient for PAE still needs to be clarified, but so far has been su successfully used in patients with significant relapsing hematuria caused by BPH and who cannot undergo a gland ablative procedure due to too many, co too many medical comorbidities. Yeah, uh, well, PUL can be done in an outpatient clinic under local anesthesia. Is it associated with retrograde ejaculation or significant bladder neck contractions? Um, having PUL doesn't prevent you from having TERP after, which is good. Uh, PAE can also be done in an, out in, in an outpatient setting. Um, well, if the patient is fit, and is willing to undergo the risk associated with TERP in order to treat his severe uh, lower, lower urinary tract symptoms due to B, BPH, then my personal choice would probably be a TERP, purely based off of the long-term efficacy, the durability uh, that are in favor of TERP compared to PUL and PAE. 